tonight's victory. We ask for your guidance, Lord. We ask the presence of the Holy Spirit. Lord, open our hearts. Give us, Lord, an ear to hear your word and your instructions that we, that we are going to apply in our lives. Truly indeed, Lord, that your name will be glorified in this place. There will be no other name, Lord, that will be glorified in this place. Teach us tonight. Lead us, Lord, tonight. We believe that there's nothing impossible in you, Lord. And there's nothing difficult, Lord, when it comes to, on, on lifting our heavy burdens to you, Lord. Father, we thank you. We love you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's all be seated. Father only. 
For as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the man of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Until the day when Noah entered the ark, and they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two of men will be in the field, one will be taken and one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and one left. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Who, the, who then is, is the faithful and wise servant? whom his master has set over his household to give them their food and uh, at the proper time. Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Okay, what's next? Truly I say to you, he will set him over all his possessions. But if that wicked servant says to himself, my master is delayed, and begins to beat his fellow servants and eat and drinks with drunkards, the master of the servant will come on, the, on, on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour he does not know, and will cut him in pieces and put him with the hypocrites. In the place there will be a weeping and gnashing of teeth. No one knows when the second coming will be. Signs will be given to us. But no one really knows when is Jesus Christ coming. If you were given a chance to know when he is coming, what will you do? Are you still going to live a life that you are living right now? Are you going to change your habits? Are we going to change our attitudes? If we knew that we are going to face the Lord tonight, what will be your response? Lord, I will change my behavior. Lord, I will... Uh... If the Lord will come, what's day to day? The day to day. Five, fifth. Court. If the door... If the door... If God will come on the 6th of November at 7 p.m., Will you accept him today? Or you will accept him tomorrow? Or are we going to continue the things that we are doing until tomorrow because we knew that the Lord will come on the 6th, then we will change. Why? Because we knew that the Lord is coming. If you knew that you are going to die tonight, ang aga masyadong mabilis, tomorrow, if you were, if all of us, if all of us will die tomorrow, what will you do tonight? Will you call your parents to say, I love you, I miss you? Will you call your enemy to say that, forgive me, I have forgiven you? Will you spend all the money that you have? Is your possession uh, will be much uh, important that the things, than the things that you wanted to do? Is your possession be more important than hugging and caring for your family? And we all knew that we cannot bring anything when we die. What will be your topmost priority when, when we knew that the next day at 10 p.m. we're going to die? Are we ready? Are we ready to leave our family that they can stand on their own? Are we ready to leave our children knowing that they will be guarded and provided by our Lord? Are we ready to leave our houses, our possession, our cars, the golds, the money, the account? 
Are we ready to face Him? Sad to say that we rather pay the, I don't know if in your country if you have it, the burial. Anong tawag doon? Insurance? St. Peter? St. Peter ba? <coughs> Death insurance. We want to pay for our burial while we were still living. But we are not investing to eternal life which is with our Lord Jesus Christ. We wanted to have a burial, a nice uh, coffin, a, a, a beautiful flowers, and at the end of the day, you it's either you will be cremated or they will put you in the grave. We are planning and we are paying for it in advance, but we are not preparing ourselves to meet our Creator. Are we ready to meet Him? It's better to invest on eternal life than the life that we have here on earth. I am not saying that you don't save or you don't plan, or you don't prepare for your future. What I want us to realize is that there is something far more important than the things that we are seeing in this world. We are all going to die. Ang ano naman ang preaching ko, we have a lot of visitors and people saying that we are all going to die. But it's uh, inevitable. All of us will. And I don't want to be left behind. Imagine if you're, not, if you're the only one who will not die. Well, if you want to stay, you can stay. If you want to live a, a, a 300 years, if you want to, then, then go ahead. But brothers and sisters, dying is easy. Dying for what we believe in is easy. Dying even for the Lord is easy. But you know what's difficult? To live for Him. To live for our Creator. I believe half, more than half, or even all of us, maybe, or may not, most of us, I believe, will die for the Lord. But will you live for Him? Will you stay faithful to Him? Will you still guard your heart when no one is looking? Will you still be a believer and follower of Christ even no one is with you? No one knows the time and the day when He is coming. So be ready. Amen. Amen. There are books, there are authors, there are pastors who were saying that they knew Recording when our stuff. Lord Jesus Christ will come. But no one knows. The Bible said so. And even if you ask someone, you know, this is my favorite verse before, when somebody is asking me what's the revelation or what's the meaning of a particular verse. D? Recording in progress. Come to think of it. So also, when you see all these things, all these things on verse 33, you know that He is near. At the very gates. So there is a sign or sign will be given to us that He is near. When it is near to uh, umulat ba? When it is near, ang tawag doon? Ha? O basta, pag-uulan na. Ano? And the rain is about to pour out. You will be able to see a dark cloud. So that's the sign. If we are hungry, we fill our stomach. So that's the sign that we are hungry. Ano? If, um, 
it's getting cold, then winter is coming. That's the sign. If our blood pressure is getting high and our temper is getting short, then that is a sign of what? That we don't have money anymore in our pocket. It makes us what? Angry. Anyway, moving forward, verse 33 says, So also, when you see all these things, you know that He is near our Lord Jesus Christ. At the very gates. So all these things, what are these things? And no one knew when He is coming. Because even if you ask them, what's, what's the next verse for this? Wala pa ako dito ron ni 20. Ah, okay. Why no one knows the time that is our Lord Jesus Christ coming, when He's coming, no one knew. The one that I have discussed earlier. Because if we knew that He is coming, we're going to change the way we behave, the way we live our lives, the way we act. Why? Because we knew that He is coming. Same is true that when we knew that our bosses are coming, we are just browsing on our Facebook, hiding on our comfort room, eating biscuits and nuts under our table, but when we knew that the boss is coming, everybody became active. Amen? But if we don't know that He is coming, things or we're going to have a different story. Amen. No one knows when our Lord Jesus Christ is coming. Don't force yourself to know. Don't exhort effort. Because the Bible said so that it is only the Father who knew when He is coming. So, if we don't know when He is coming and we are not certain of our future, what is the best thing for us to do? If we don't know that the thieves is coming tonight in our house, what will be the best thing that we need to do? Lock the doors. Lock the windows. Uh, set the alarm. Amen? Are we still friends? Okay. Since you don't know, when our Lord Jesus Christ is coming, continue to believe on Him. Continue to be faithful on Him. It's not the same as we knew when our money will last. Oh, I still, I only have 1,500 dirhams and it's just 4th of uh, November. And the next salary will be 31. So definitely next two weeks more, then your money will be, you will run out of money. So you know when you are going to run out of money. Now, we don't know when our Lord Jesus Christ is coming. You don't know when you are going to run out of life and breath that God gave you. So prepare not only yourself, but prepare our whole family that one day it will come. That our Lord Jesus Christ will come to take us all in heaven if we believe on Him. Amen? Deuteronomy 29 verse 29 says, The secret thing belongs to the Lord our God. But the thing that are revealed belong to us and to our children forever. That we may do all the words of this law. No one knew when He is coming because it is not revealed to us. But what revealed to us is the sign when He is coming. What revealed to us is what we need to do to be with Him. What revealed to us is how we need to live our lives. Whether we admit it or not, it is revealed in our hearts. But most of the time, it is easy to live according to what we want, according to the things that pleases us, than living uh, a life that pleases the Lord. Most of the people feel 
that obeying and serving the Lord and living for the Lord is a prison. And committing a sin is freedom. Ay, malaya. I, I am free. I'm not, I, I do not belong to that particular uh, religion where they cannot drink, smoke, ano ba? take drugs. I can marry for five, seven, how many wives I want, how many girlfriends I want. But are you really free? Or you were a slave of this world? Do you really wanted to do it? Or you are just being forced by the environment that you are living into? It's not because that a lot of people are doing, then, you, that, then it is the right thing. It's difficult for us to oppose what's happening around us. Why? Because you will be outcasted. But I'd rather be outcasted by the group of people than I'd rather be casted by the Lord. And when the Lord told me, depart from me, I never knew you. It doesn't matter if the people embraces me. Time will come when it is not important whether we were rich or poor. Whether we are handsome still or not so handsome. Time will come that it is not important what we have. Remember, you came out of this world with nothing and you're going to leave this world with nothing as well. Amen. But if you live your life with the Lord, then you are going to leave this place, this earth, with Him. What are these things? For he says, I'm in a favorable time, I listen to you. And in a day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The Lord is telling you, the Lord is touching your hearts. Today, will you will receive your salvation. And those who have already received it, and those who will receive it today, I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, that will be the best moment of your life. Receiving your salvation. It's free. You will not pay, you will not pay anything for it. All you have to do is believe. The accepted currency in heaven is not the money that you have on your wallet or the credit cards that you are using. The only currency that is accepted in heaven is faith. In exchange of His grace. And the faith as well that we have is from Him also. So it is a win-win situation. Salvation is always available. And I haven't heard a believer telling someone that ah, I should have received our Lord next year. Those who have already accepted Him last year, for example, or in case I have accepted our Lord Jesus Christ way before, I will never hear Him say or hear her say that uh, it's a regret to receive the Lord last year. I should have received him, received him 2025. What can you hear? Or, or the things that you will hear on a believer of Christ is that I should have known Christ way before. I should have served and obeyed him when I was in high school or when I was in elementary. I should have not lost a lot of uh, uh, opportunity. I should have not missed a lot of blessings from Him. You know why? Because if there is no God in our life, we will not be able to see or to separate whichever is blessing from the Lord and, whichever we are, uh, and whatever we are receiving from this world. Blessings from the Lord are the things that cannot be bought by money. Blessings of this world are the things, of course, the Lord wants us to have a prosperous life. The Lord wants us to enjoy our life. It's not bad to get rich. 
love I actually I was about to say I love being rich. <laughs> but I love the feeling <laughs> of being rich. But 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 the real blessing are the things that cannot be bought by money. Peaceful heart. Peace in your heart. Yung tulog sa gabi. Ano English doon? Sasabihin ko sana. Sound sleep. Sound sleep daw. Yung sleep may sound. I mean, if you can sleep soundly, means you snore. Ano yung sa tululaw ay? Lamaya lang. Pag nakakatulog ka ng mahimbing, sorry, brother. Ah, yan, just the Tagalog. So, if you can sleep well, tapos tulong, laway mo dito, wala kang iniisip na problema, then it's a blessing. Amen? Palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. If you can still walk, if you can still see, if you can still read and understood the things that happening around you, well, that is a blessing. That cannot be bought by money. The joy of seeing your family happy. The joy of seeing yourself at the mirror. Talking to yourself, I'm so handsome. It cannot be bought by money. No one might believe you, but still believe in yourself. Amen? Because you are, fearful, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen? Oh, I'm so beautiful. Tell that to yourself every day. I'm so beautiful. That's a blessing from the Lord. Amen? But salvation is available today. Salvation is available today. And it is Amen? What else? Since the angel don't know when our Lord Jesus Christ is coming, it is impossible for us to believe it. Why? Because angels are always involved in our Lord Jesus Christ's activity. Amen? So for the Son of Man is going to come with His angel in the glory of His Father, and then He will repay each person according to what He has done. Actually, I was about to focus on angel. But I, I have this revelation of then he will pay each person according to what he has done. All of us will be judged according to the things that we have done. And even our uh, Saint Paul says that also we are going to be judged according to the words that we have said. Praise be to God. What else? 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 7 says, And to grant relief to you who are afflicted as well as to us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with His mighty angels. He's calling angels mighty. And He will send out His angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather His elect from the four winds from one end to uh, from one end of heaven to the other. Imagine how the angels uh, will be participating on His second coming, but even the angels don't know when it will be. So maybe the angels in heaven are talking. When is our Lord Jesus Christ going to go down to earth? No, no, you ask him. You ask him. No one knew. No one knew when he is coming. Amen. Praise be to God. Since no one knew when he is coming, our Lord Jesus Christ gave us the signs, the things that is going to happen when the time is near for him to come. But con 
concerning that day and hour, no one knows. <coughs> I'm not angry. I just have a loud voice. <laughs> but concerning that day and hour, no one knows. Not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. It's only God the Father who knew. For as were the days of Noah, another sign that is given to us by the Lord, so will be the coming of the Son. Who knew Noah? Si Noah? Kala lang si Noah? Sino si Noah? Who's Noah? The one who made the ark. Kala ko si Noah was the former classmate of Dodong. So, the days will be like in Noah's days. The days that will happen is like on his days. So when you feel that the days that's happening around us is the same as the days when Noah is building the ark, then the end is near. Ang problema, Pastor, hindi namin alam kung anong nangyari nung panahon ni Noah. Pag-usapan natin. Genesis 6, verse 1 to 8. Dito ko po basahin, ano? Okay. When the man began to multiply on the face of the land, and daughters were born into them, the Son of God saw that the daughters of man were attractive. And they took, this is the days of Noah. Let me remind you, huh? Then the Lord said, and they took as their wives any they choose. Then the Lord said, my spirit shall not abide in the man forever. For his, for his flesh, his day shall be 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days. And also afterwards, when the Son of God came into the daughters of man, and they bore children to them, these were the mighty men who were, uh, who were of old, the men of the owned. Okay, the days of Noah. Natapos ko ba? Okay, meron pa pala. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that very intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Puro kasamaan. And the Lord regret that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved to him, uh, and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out men whom I have created from the face of the land, man and animals and creeping things and birds of the heavens, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Talikan natin. This is the days of Noah. When the man began to multiply, are we multiplying from this very day? According to statistic, humankind on this earth is increasing 1 billion every 12 years. So, we are multiplying. Amen? Are you still with me? Okay. So we are multiplying. And the Son, and the Son of God saw that the daughters of man were attractive and they took as their wives any day choose. Okay. Marriage is a very sacred Ceremony from the Lord. You cannot just take someone and marry him or her. Come on, I will marry you. God instituted Mary because it is the picture of the things to come. That when our Lord Jesus Christ will come, he's going to marry us. He's going to pick up his bride. For we are the bride of Christ. You cannot 
not just marry someone because it's sacred. And whatever will happen inside the marriage is sacred as well. Even the Bible says that when two agree on earth, referring to man and woman who are married, heaven up or heaven will open for blessings. Amen. Okay, what else? Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not abide. And the book. And then, okay, and then you Let me move forward. For in as, uh, sorry, man. For as in those days, before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving, what? In marriage. You know what's the, let, let, let me cut it short. You know what's the same during those days of Noah than what we are, than what's happening today? They ignore Christ. They are living as if there is no God. Same is true today. A lot of people are living as if there is no God. And if there is God, they wanted to have a God according to their preferences. Siguro naman mauunawaan ako ni Lord. Siguro naman maiintindihan ako ni Lord. Brothers and sisters, if it is not aligned to the will of God, if it is not aligned to His word, then God will not understand you the way you wanted God to understand you. I magnify my word much more than I magnify my name, the Lord says. And He will not bend it for your own sake. For our own sake. People are what? Eating, drinking, marrying, and giving into marriage, but they forgot God. Noah is a preacher of righteousness. And Noah, and it took more than 70 years for Noah to build the ark. Every day of his life, people are asking, why are you building the ark? When it is years that, that, that rain hasn't dropped in this place. And there is no near sea or body of water near to us. Still, Noah is preaching righteousness. Still, Noah is telling them that the flood will come. Noah is preaching repentance. But no one believes him. Same as what is happening today. Believers of Christ are preaching about righteousness. People are going to parks. People are, are going somewhere uh, which uh, on the on the deepest part of the of the mountain. People are going somewhere so that they will be able to deliver the gospel. Missionaries are dying. But still, there are people who don't want to accept him. Brothers and sisters, do not ignore the preaching of righteousness that you have heard and that you will hear in the future. Because it's for your own sake. God will remain God even if you don't believe on Him. But you need God to live your life. We need Him. We cannot tell God that, Lord, I have given money to charity. I have fed the poor. I have given, I have helped people. But the question of the Lord is, do you know my son, Jesus Christ? Lord, I, I have executed, I, I have uh, perfected the Ten Commandments. Because the law is, according to the Bible, is more than 600 laws. And you break one, the Bible says, you break one, you break all. So let's sum up the 600 into 10. 
Who among us? Huwag na pong itaas ang kamay. Don't raise your hands. But who among us perfected the Ten Commandments? Ah, oh, wait, wait. Who knew the Ten Commandments? Limang huwag papatay, tsaka limang huwag magnanakaw as a summary. But who knew the Ten Commandments by heart? And if you don't know it, how can you perfect it? Let's sum it up by five. Because it is being summarized by five. Love one another. Oh, let's summarize by two. Who knew the two? Greatest commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind. Ano pa? With all your strength, with all your soul. With all your mind, walang dagdagan. And the next is, love your neighbor as you love yourselves. Can we perfect those two commandments? Huh? It's easy to love my neighbor, but it's hard to love my wife. It's easy to be forgiving to the to my neighbor on uh, on Philippines than to forgive my office mate here in UAE. Have you loved God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul? Have we? Hindi ba tayo nagsisin ng maling? Because if we love our neighbor the way we love ourselves, then we will not lie. Because you will never lie to yourself. So you will never lie to your neighbor. You will never steal from yourself. Because you will not steal to your neighbor as well. You will groom yourself. You want to experience a lot of things by grace of God. Say this truth with your neighbor. If you want to have a better life, then you should be also praying that your neighbor will have a better life. Then who is your neighbor? The one sitting beside you. The one in front of you. The one at your back. The people around you is your neighbor. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. It doesn't say that love your neighbor when he or she loves you. Loving your neighbor is unconditional. Loving someone is unconditional. Amen? Amen. Tell your neighbor, I love you like the love of the Lord. I love I love you. <laughs> okay. Now. Who wants to go to heaven? Amen. Who wants to go first? <laughs> Christians are not afraid <laughs> to die because they knew that they are going to heaven. It's a victory for us. Now, that is why in Christian community, in the church, if you ask those uh, Christians, who is not afraid to die? Who wants to go to heaven? Amen! With a loud voice, with a cheering heart, and the uh, Raising hands. Amen. Amen. Then the next question of the one speaking is, who wants to go first? And then there was silence. <laughs> Why? Isn't it because that we cherish 
the things that we have here on earth more than being with our Lord Jesus Christ? Is it because we are not ready to face Him because of the secret sin that we are continually doing? Is it simply because we are scared, we are not scared to die, but we are scared for those people that we are going to leave behind? I'm not saying that you should die tonight. Okay, let me be clear with you. But if you love your family, if you love your wife, you love your brother, your sister, your parents, your children, mas mahal sila ng Panginoon kesa mas mahal mo sila. Amen. God loves them much more than you do. It is not you who's providing for them. It is God through you. sa amin. Laksa ang loob. Maliliit lang mga bata. Huh? But give it all to God. Early before the, the, the service, we have all felt this heaviness in our hearts. Lift it all up to God. There are things that we cannot do within our power and within our capability and ability. But there's nothing impossible to God. God is not surprised where you are in at right now. He's not surprised that you are facing challenges. Why? Because He is allowing challenges to happen in your life so that one way or another, one point of your life, you will be able to trust God that if you cannot do anything, it is easy for Him to do it in your life. Yeah. Amen? Mabuti ang Diyos sa bawat pagkakataon. Just like the days of Noah. And if it is happening also today, then it is safe to say that the time is near. How many enriched nation last week? More than 500. Less than. Less than 500 enriched nation. The Bible says, when the gospel is preached to all the nations, then the end will come. We have less than 500 nations. We have thousands of missionaries, if I may say so. Hundreds of thousands of missionaries. Trying to reach them. Trying to reach every corner of a particular nation to preach the gospel. So be ready. Don't tell yourself na bukas na lang ako magbabago. Or I will just change the way I live, behave, and act tomorrow. Because He's not yet coming. No one knew. That's the, actually, that's the burden. We don't know when He is coming. So we should always be ready. You know why we are still alive today? Because God has a plan for you. Amen. Though we are sinning, and we haven't felt the consequences yet, we thought that there is no consequences. Ah, I will continue to live like this. Because nothing is happening. I haven't feel or I haven't seen the wrath of God. It's not just, uh, it's, it's not like uh, before when Ananias and, uh, and uh, Sapira lied to the Holy Spirit. When they lie, they instantly die. Ah, I lied yesterday and still I'm alive. I have done and committed these things, but still I am alive. You know why? Because God's patience and kindness leads to repentance. We are alive today because God wants us and God permits us to live again or to live another day. Why? Because God is kind. God is love. God is full of grace and mercy. He wants you, whether you believe it or not. 
God wants you to be with Him. He loves to be with you. Regardless of your past, regardless of the things that you have done before, regardless of the things that you will do in the future, God wants you to be with Him. Gusto ka ng Panginoon? Mahal ka ng Panginoon. So those who receive that kindness, those who feel that kindness from the Lord, those who who knew that God loves them, sino, sino, uh, who, who among us here believe that God loves you? Amen. Raise your hand please. <clears throat> oh. That naman, all of us. So it should lead that love of Christ we lead to repentance. And repentance is not just saying sorry to the Lord to the things that we have done, but repentance is what? A change of hearts. God knew you by, by name. Kailangan ka ng Panginoon. Alam ng Panginoon ang pangalan mo. God knows everything he even numbered your hair. And when God is calling you, God is calling you by name, not by nationality. Not by characteristic. Not by who you think you are, but who God thinks you are. Brothers and sisters, the things that you have done which you are not proud of, leave it in this place tonight. Amen. Yung ayaw na ugali mo, leave it here tonight. When you go out of this room, make sure that you are holding the love of Christ in you. Amen. If someone hates you because you are a strict person. If someone hates you because you are a loud person, if someone hates you because you lie, you steal, you kill, leave it tonight. Because the Lord says, the old has gone, the new has come. Bago ka nang nilalang paglabas mo nito, whether you believe it or not. That is what the word says. That is what the Bible says. In a new spirit, I will pour into you. The old has gone, the new has come. Believe on it. Have faith on it. Before you were a, 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 a prisoner of anger, and short-tempered. You were a prisoner of, uh, or, of, of pornography. You were a prisoner of, of, of adultery. You were a prisoner of, of lying. But the Lord said that, but whoever sets Jesus free is free indeed. Amen. Malaya ka na kapatid. So live, act, and behave like a free man. The devil has nothing on you. But our Lord Jesus Christ is embracing you. Let's all stand up. Brothers and sisters, talk to God. Sabihin niyo po ang gusto niyong sabihin sa, sa Panginoon. Close your eyes. Don't mind the things around you. Don't mind your shipmate. Don't mind the people at your back. The people be behind you, in front of you, beside you. Just simply close your eyes and talk to God. Ask God whatever you wanted to ask from Him. Tell God what you want to tell Him. That particular pain in your heart, 
Give it to God. Lord, if there are pain in their hearts, Lord, replace it with joy and happiness in the name of Jesus. Lord, if there are burdens, Lord, in their shoulders, we're lifting it all up to you, Lord. Lord, if there are unforgiveness, we release forgiveness in Jesus' name. Lord, if there is doubt in our mind, we speak wisdom in the name of Jesus. Lord, tonight we're going to celebrate life. Tonight, Lord, when we go home, we are leaving our old self in this place. We are a new being. The old has gone. Lord, the old us. The old lazy. The old liar. The old unfaithful. The old person, Lord, is gone. We are now a new creation in Christ Jesus. Lord, tonight is your night. Tonight, Lord, will be the day that we are going to receive the salvation that you have prepared for us. Lord, buksan mo ang aming mga puso. Buksan mo ang aming mga isipan. Lord, your kindness will lead into salvation, Lord. Those who wanted to be prayed for, those who wanted to accept our Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, those who want to be ready on the second coming, those who want to open their hearts, brothers and sisters, this is not about religion. This is about your relationship with the Lord. Religion will not save us. Religion will will not bring us to heaven. <clears throat> it is only our Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, if you feel the calling from the Holy Spirit, if there are things that you wanted to be prayed for, Hallelujah. The word of the Lord says, if you are not ashamed of me, then I will not be ashamed of you. Those who draw closer to God, sabi ng Panginoon, draw yourself to me and I will draw myself to you. Hindi importante ang relihiyon, And we will not change your religion. What important is your relationship to God? It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter what you have done before. It doesn't matter kung ano ang nagawa mo noon. What important to God is you now, today. Dito po. Ano yung Bernie? Ikaw. Brother. Ray. Sige po. Pila tayo. Ay, pila. Ano po pa nga? Ronald. Praise God. Sister, what's your name? Romans 10, 9, 10 says, If you believe in your heart and confess in your mouth that Lord Jesus Christ is Lord and invite Him in your heart, then you will be saved. Believe that He died and rose again, then you will be saved. The Bible did not uh, uh, told us that if you change your religion, you will be saved. Because religion doesn't matter. Jesus Christ came not for religion, but for relationship. Amen. Ang importante, may pananampagataya at pagtitiwala sa Panginoon. Amen. Anyway, let's, let's raise our hands as a sign of uh, surrender to God. Close your eyes. Talk to God. Whatever you want to say to God, say it now. <coughs> Your plans in life, a 
asking for forgiveness, asking for healing, asking for a better family, asking for a better relationship, asking for a better future. Talk to God. The healing that you were praying for, release in the name of Jesus. The bridges that has been broken because of lying and wrong relationship fixed in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I came to you today and believe in my heart that you are my Savior. I know, Lord, that you died on the cross, paid my sins, and I am now a new being. After three days, you rose again, seated on the right hand of the Father. God the Father, thank you for writing my name in the book of life. Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, starting today, I'm going to live alive according to your word, according to your will. Lord Jesus, protect my family, guide my heart. Heal my, my life. I am yours. Come into my heart. And I'll make you my Lord and Savior. In the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Palakpakan natin ang Now we're going to pray for you. Lord, we pray for our family, sa mga kapatid namin itong Panginoon, whatever they are praying for, whatever they are asking for. Ama, marami kong salamat na ngayon ay uh, binago mo na sila. Ngayon, Lord, they are going to live a, a life that is full of joy. Lord, yung kabigatan sa kanilang buhay, binibigay namin sa iyo, Panginoon. Yung mga bagay na gusto namin, yung mabago na hindi namin kaya mo. We're giving it up to you. Lord, yung mga sakit, Panginoon, na nararamdaman namin, or the one that they are uh, uh, feeling, Lord, healing in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are the one that we should have been at the warrior, Lord. We're asking for forgiveness as well. Lord, you are the one that we should have been at the warrior, Lord. We are giving it all up to you. Starting today, Lord, we're going to live a life full of Christ. Starting today, Lord, we're going to live a life, Panginoon, na may kung kung mayroong pagkukulang sa kanilang buhay, ay kukunoon mo yun, Panginoon. Kung mayroong kalungkutan, Panginoon, palitan mo ng maligayahan. Lord, it is not an accident that they are here today. You are the one who orchestrated today. You are the one who called them. It is not an accident, Lord, that they are here. Thank you, Lord, for opening the gates of heaven and for pouring out your blessings to my brothers and sisters. Lord, whatever they are going through right now, it is already done. It's already finished. Yes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all the saints there. Amen!
continue to worship in our true and living God. It's now in uh, worship in giving. As what his word says in Proverbs chapter, chapter 11, verse 25 says, The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. In Tagalog, Ang tao matulungin, sasagana ang pamumuhay, at ang marunong tumulong ay tiyak na tutulungan. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Indeed, it is, the word of the Lord is so clear. Amen? But, brothers and sisters, indeed, God, the, the number one is, the, the number one, just so generous is God. You know, this scripture, God teaches us the principle, His principle in giving. How to be prosper in life? We, we must be a generous. Amen? Amen. Kailangan, kailangan, natin, kailangan, ang, kailangan natin maging matulungin para sasagana po ang buhay natin. Ito po yung prinsipyo niya. Ito po yung prinsipyo ng Panginoon. Kasi the Lord is, He gave us, He is the source, He is, he is the so generous. He is generous to us. So, that's why we, God used us, His people, that to display how generous He is. And, in, and it's very clear, upang tayo po yung ang buhay natin ay sagana, eh tayo po tayo po tayo po maging matulungin sa kapwa natin. Kasi po, if we, we, uh, we give generously, if we are we are so abundant. If we understood, you know, we understood that that the uh, that the Lord is is an indeed faithful. And you know, brothers and sisters, in giving also, you know, there is freedom. In freedom, freedom of fear, freedom of worries. Amen? Because, you see, that's why um, we can see in where there is freedom because everything owned by the Lord, even our worries, our problems, everything is for Him. So what we will, what we will do is just to give to Him. Amen? So that's it. In Him, there is freedom. Because when you, when you give to Him, worries no more. Yeah, and we keep, we, we keep, um, alam mo yung lalo pang, alam mo yung mamumuhay tayo na we are depend on Him. At, and indeed, it's really God principles that, sabi nga, who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Di ba? Have you experienced that, alam mo yung, if you, yung, um, uh, if we help, if you give others, alam mo yung, the, the feeling is grabe, di ba? That's the refresh. If poor, those who refresh others, will them be refreshed? Amen. Because that's God's principle. When we give, we also receive. Amen. Amazing, di ba? Sabi nga, grabe klarong klaro. Ang tao matulungin sa sagana ang pamumuhay at ang marunong tumulong ay tiyak na tutulungan. Tutulungan. At we have so many people, uh, like for what, I give you one example. If you heard this call gate, you know, this, this call gate is the, from the beginning, um, uh, you know, he, he, he trusts, really, he trusts the Lord. He was, this William call gate, he's one of the deacons of his deacons. And you know what, you know what he did? Uh, he lived, like, supposed to be in giving, supposed to be, the tithe is 10, 10, but for him, he live on the tent and he give the nineties to others. So amazing, yeah. And now look at now at Colgate still Colgate. <laughs> until until this moment because he knows the principle. He knows God's principle in giving that we must be generous, so we will be prospering in our life. We'll be prosper all all the way, the Lord and and surely. That feeling that you you receive joy, happiness in your heart, and also 
you bless the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I encourage everyone, this is the key. We, all, we will be generous so our life will be prosper. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Giving us in the front. And let's stand up and lay our... Let's pray for our offering. Hallelujah, Father God. Lord, thank you so much, O oh God. Indeed, you are so generous, O oh God. Indeed, you are the one who give us, O oh God, as Lord, we are able to give, Panginoon. Lord, Lord, we thank you, O oh God, because indeed, Lord, this is our operation, our life, Panginoon. Indeed, it will please you, O oh God. Thank you. Thank you, God, for, for the hearts that uh, is willing to give. Thank you, Lord, for continue teaching us to be generous, O oh God, in order for us to be our lives to be prosperous, O oh God, for your glory, and, and all, only for your glory, O oh God, Lord, that that will, and also this uh, financial, oh God, it will expand it for your kingdom, oh God. And thank you, Lord, for indeed, you are so good. All it is to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us uh, continue to stand, to receive, uh, continue to receive the blessings. Let us raise our hands for the benediction. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majesty. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. And all the saints says, Amen. 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 Let us give our glory. Amen. Clap your hands, Bob.